friends, and welcome to Body of Christ Ministries, where we're not a denomination, we're the Body of Christ. I'm Brother Glover, and I just want to thank you for joining me. I do apologize for the lengthy delay and last time we brought you a video, but today I want to endeavor to start like a small series, maybe a two to three part series on the title discussing, um, well, actually the title is What You Don't Know Is Destroying You. Uh, it's a message that I had the privilege of preaching about a week or so ago, and um, so we're going to get into some very interesting things here, and uh, I'll try to be as brief as possible. I know that people are busy this day and time, and attention span and so forth, but uh, I just pray that um, this video will find you very hungry and, and searching for some things in your life. So before we begin, let us have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, most holy and high God, I just come before you giving thanks to you giving honor to you, Lord, and thanking you for this privilege and opportunity. I pray, Lord, that you would just remove any hindering spirits right now, Lord, and enable us, Lord, to hear from the throne room of grace. And Lord, as we do, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will be able to pierce each and every ear, each and every heart, each and every mind, Lord, to receive the word of truth. In Jesus' name, we give you honor, glory, and praise. Amen. Well, First and foremost, um, the scripture, the foundational scripture God has given me for this message is Hosea chapter four, verse six. And um, what I want to what I want you to believe and endeavor and prepare your heart for is to be willing to unlearn and put away any wrong beliefs, any wrong teachings that you may have heard and to humble yourself and just be willing to relearn or to learn. The word of truth, when God reveals a new thing, you know, the problem is not so much as not knowing something, but, you know, um, Jesus talked in a passage in Matthew and Mark where, you know, the Pharisees have made the traditions of God of no effect. I mean, excuse me, their traditions have made the word of God of no effect. Excuse me for that. And so I asked a question in church a couple of Sundays ago. Um, I asked a question and I said, how many have ever heard, and of course, don't raise your hand, but how many have even said themselves, what you don't know won't hurt? Well, you know, it's the furthest thing from the truth. And as I told you, the scripture passage we're going to be reading, it comes from Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, and it reads as thus. God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Then it went on to say, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee that thou should be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I also, or I will also forget thy children. Now, let's, let's go over this verse and break this verse down, segment by segment. Now, you know, as I often tell people from time to time, you know, God is not even addressing sinners or people in the world. He's addressing his people. In the Old Testament, where you want to refer to his people as the Israelites or the people of Judah, you know, I still believe, you know, this day and time being that we're under a new covenant, you know, um, as Ephesians says, as Paul says in Ephesians, we're one new man, both Jew and Gentile Christians. So we're all, whether you're referring to the Jews, you know, in the Old Testament, as the Bible call it saints, or whether you're referring to people under the new covenant, Christians, God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, and breaking this verse down, what I what I shared with the church was that lack of knowledge is not itself is not a sin. It's just a mishap because, and I gave this illustration. I said if um if you were a poor person and you were struggling, but some forefather or ancestor left you a, a fortune, you know, an inheritance, but you didn't know about it. Now, it's not a sin that you didn't know about it, but it's a tragedy because, you know, if you get put out of your home because of lack, let's say you are working a job, but you're just not making ends meet and you get put out and you're on the streets and then because of malnutrition, you can't afford to eat properly then you get sick and you die prematurely. Well, you have been destroyed by lack, by poverty, by sickness. All these forms are are are. are Part, pieces and parts of what's called the curse. Now, I know because of the new covenant, everybody that accepts Jesus is not under the law or cursed, but you suffer the effects or symptoms of the curse. 
um, it's what I had learned in prior teachings. But now if this person would have known, okay, well, I have a fortune, you know, or an inheritance, and they would have found out about it and how to appropriate it or receive it, then they would not have been destroyed by lack, by poverty, by sickness and premature death. Now, here's where it becomes a sin. And I told the congregation, it's not just the ignorance that destroys a person or, or well, it destroys a person. It's not just ignorance that is a sin. It's an unwillingness to receive the knowledge of the truth. When God gives you light and you reject it, this is where the problem comes in. Now, the next statement says, because thou hast rejected knowledge, now that's where it becomes a sin because God has endeavored to give you light on a situation. And when God gives us light on something, it's not to bust our bubble or rain on our parade. It's to help us because God loves us. And it says, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That's one consequence. But now this goes even further. It says, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Now, he was addressing the priest in this chapter, but how many knows that this applies to all of God's children, okay? Because in the part, first part of the verse, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, the third segment says, God says, sin, thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Now, this is where generational curses come into being. Now, it's not that God is punishing the children because of the, parents and forefathers sins but because of what they have practiced if they didn't teach their children to remember the law of God or to remember his commandments and they do things a certain way because of that the children have to suffer the same consequences and see this is how the lack of knowledge is destroying these people now um let me give you a modern scenario let's just say high blood pressure and heart disease runs in a family now people now doctors and science will have you believe that it's hereditary but no if this is what god has showed me several years ago if you've been eating grease if you cook with grease all the time and this grease is clogging up your arteries and cause you to have a heart attack or heart failure or whatever the case may be it's not the fact that it's hereditary but it's as a result of the same traditions that have been practiced and passed down generation grandmama cooked um, with grease, then mama cooked with grease, now I cook with grease, and then my children cook with grease. We all die prematurely in less than half the amount of time that God has really given us. And I won't go into numbers because I know, you know, not for no debates here. So the point being is, it's not just ignorance alone, but rejection of knowledge and truth. Now, I like a lot of times in my teachings to say this, you know, Jesus and Paul both said that in the mouths of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So with that being said, a lot of times I like to share at least two or three witnesses. In other words, two or three different writers, not the same books that the same writer wrote, but different books. John may have written something. Peter may have written something. Paul may have written something. And along those same lines, there's three witnesses. So now in the Old Testament, the writer, you know, I'm, I'm assuming is Hosea. And then in the New Testament, I just want you to, I won't take the time to read these, but, but Paul said in two different places in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, he said that because they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And then also in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12, Paul talked about people that receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You know, we're in a day and age where we live in a generation of people who have itching ears and they want their ears tickled and they flock to these preachers, I say from time to time, who will tell them that, you know, we're under grace now. We are under grace, but it doesn't give you a free ticket to sin. Well, saints, I hope that this has been a blessing to you. I uh, just wanted to kind of hit some key points and, and, um, let you go ahead on about and enjoy the rest of your day or night or whatever it is you're doing, whatever day and time it is when you will be viewing this video. I love you so much. Now, um, this is part one to the to a, a series title entitled, What You Don't Know Is Destroying You. Um, in part two, I'm going to talk about how sin is causing health issues. 
Okay, so with that being said, let me close with a word of prayer and please stay tuned for part two of this message. Precious Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, I pray that people have been able to receive what was said as you poured out revelation and wisdom. I give you honor, glory, and um, praise and credit for it, Lord. Um, I just thank you for choosing me to share this word, Lord. And if there's anybody who doesn't know where they stand right now, Lord, we pray that they will just come to you right now by faith and give their hearts and their lives to you. All they have to do is confess with their mouths and believe in their hearts the Lord Jesus and that he, that God has raised him from the dead. And your word says they shall be saved. So if you have not given your life to Christ yet, I just encourage you to do that right now. Just ask God to. Speak to the Heavenly Father right now. Just say, Father, I ask you to please forgive me of my sins. I do believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross and that he rose from the dead. I accept him as my personal Lord and Savior. Jesus, I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, saints, please stay tuned for part two of this message. What you don't know is destroying you. Goodbye.